welcome. Thank you for joining us in our next segment for Trust Your Gut, Eat for Satisfaction. Today we are here with RD and anti-diet dietitian Anna Gustafson, and you also work um, in a product development role, so you've got that um, food science knowledge also, which I think is so helpful when we talk about this topic. So Anna, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nikia. It's really fun to be here, and I'm glad to be joining you all to share a little bit of my background and knowledge. So I would love to start off with hearing how your work impacts the community that you're, you serve. So in my role as a product development dietitian, I kind of advise um, our team of food scientists, well, how can we design foods that are good for the planet and good for people? Um, so they've been doing that for long before I joined the team, but I'm bringing this really science-backed approach. Um, as a dietitian, um, part of the organizations I'm part of is that they release a lot of research that I have access to that my colleagues may not. But also, um, I spend a lot of time kind of dismantling some of the diet culture talk that I hear around the office. And since I'm new, I kind of sometimes bite my tongue because I'm like, I'm not here to like stomp on anyone's beliefs and um, it's really hard to push back against that diet culture that's so ingrained in people. Um, but I've kind of been trying to plant seeds where I can to bring my intuitive eating work. And as far as I work a little bit on the marketing side and we work B2B so we don't sell directly to consumers, but um, making sure that we're not using claims like guilt-free or uh, like sinful or mm -hmm. things like that that imply morality. Um, I really work to talk about the positive benefits of our food rather than the negative. So it's really approaching it gently and planting those seeds to make gradual change. And so for us who have mostly thought of nutrition in the context of diet culture and what they give like provide to us. Mm -hmm. um, how do we decipher the science and fact-based messages from those harmful and fad-based messages? I think one of the big things is if it's really marketed as like keto-friendly, paleo, any kinds of claims on the front, like you know that that's a marketing ploy. Um, and I think learning, I mean, I don't want to say learning how to read nutrition labels because that is not my focus at all. Like I want someone to go to the store and be comfortable picking something off the shelf and going, I'm comfortable eating this. I allow myself to eat any food without judgment. Um, but kind of looking beyond the front of the box um, and instead of shopping for claims or shopping for labels, shopping for what sounds satisfying. Um, so say you were looking at two boxes of mac and cheese and one is like craft dinner blue box whatever and the other one is like annie's organic um low sodium low fat mac and cheese and maybe you've tried them both and you go i actually really like that annie's um it's satisfying to me and i know how to prepare it and my family enjoys it um then that's fine and you make that choice but if it's two or three times the price and you're going, mm, it says it's organic. And um, I, I just feel like it's the healthier choice. Like the box, it looks super natural. Then you kind of want to question, are you choosing, you know, that mac and cheese because of the claims and because of the, you know, natural aesthetic of it, even if you might like craft dinner more, or are you choosing it because it's something that you actually enjoy more? I like how you relate it to like being in the supermarket because that is what like everyone experiences mm -hmm. comparing the two products and definitely yeah so a lot of times I think of diet culture messaging in like magazines and tv and all of that but it is right on our food products too Absolutely. Um, and sometimes we can forget that those claims on those products are only meant to sell us they're not meant to help us. Right, and a lot of them are unsubstantiated. Um, so like the term natural is not regulated. And one that I learned when I was doing some research for my job actually, is that um, low carb does not have criteria. So low sodium actually has a criteria. It needs to be under X amount of milligrams per serving. Low fat, light diet, like all those words have to be under a certain amount of grams of whether it's fat or sugar, calories. Um, 
Low carb does not have that. So if you see something that's marketed as low carb, that is actually just like a made up criteria. There is a third party um, keto certification that you can get. Companies pay thousands of dollars to have their product keto certified. And they're basically just paying money to this company to have them slap a keto certified label on their food. And that's not substantiated by the FDA. Um, and it doesn't, certainly does not mean it's any healthier. If you had a child with epilepsy and you were actually feeding them a ketogenic diet, that's like, a, like medical ketogenic is so different than like fad diet keto. Yeah, that's definitely a good distinction to make too because some people do follow strict dietary needs because of health issues and whatnot. Um, but whenever, whenever food manufacturers have freedom to label things without certifications, it can make it more confusing for people who have those strict dietary needs. Absolutely. And one thing I like to mention too about kind of just claims and labels and marketing is you'll see non-GMO um, on really, you could see on any product, you'll see like non-GMO popcorn, non-GMO cereal, non-GMO um, asparagus. There's only 11, I believe, genetically modified crops in the U.S. And popcorn is not one of them. So I learned this from one of my favorite accounts, Food Science Babe. And she's a food scientist, she's brilliant, and she's out there to like myth bust all these food rules. And so you'll see non-GMO popcorn, and it costs twice as much as the popcorn that doesn't say non-GMO. There's no such thing as GMO popcorn. That doesn't exist. So don't spend the extra money on the non-GMO popcorn because you're literally just paying for marketing. I saw that a lot with gluten-free five years ago or so. Mm -hmm. Like gluten-free kale. Like, well, absolutely it's gluten-free. <laughs> some people don't necessarily have the education to be able to immediately say, oh, of course that item will be gluten-free. And so they are willing to spend more money for Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. And I think it's so, it just like pains me to think about the, the food industry and marketing taking advantage of consumers who, like you said, don't have that education or maybe just don't know any better um, and just kind of, I mean, I would love to say like, everyone in the food industry like is well-intentioned to only deliver fact-based information to consumers and like, unfortunately, that's just not the case. Um, and that's not anything against the food industry, obviously, like I work in the food industry, but that's why I am really passionate in my job about making sure we're making substantiated evidence-based claims and we're not just like slapping a label on something to make people pay more for it. One thing I also like to kind of bring up since I do work in food is the sphere of ingredients. Um, so people will say things like, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. And I always say, okay, well, I mean, I didn't make this up. I've heard this from other people, but how many people could pronounce quinoa 10 years ago? It was like quinoa, quinoa, like no one knew how to say it. And we know now like quinoa is a complete protein and it's really full of nutrients. And now people love quinoa. They're crazy about quinoa. And it's like, same thing goes with ingredients that you see in packaged food. And I've learned this a lot in my job I'm in now is that every ingredient is there for a reason. There is no food scientist putting stuff into your food to make you sick or to make you unhealthy. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about well, well, food scientists put addictive ingredients in your food to make you come back for more. And it's like, well, yes, obviously food scientists want to make food that's delicious. So you enjoy it. And like, yeah, obviously they want you to buy more, but they're not putting addictive ingredients in there. And it's kind of like, you probably understand as a chef, people tell you your food tastes delicious. What do you do? You're like, I put spices in it. I put herbs and spices and salt because it makes food taste good. That's exactly what food scientists do, but they do it um, in packaged food so you can deliver it to people for convenience and somehow that's different. Um, so uh, one of my favorite ingredients to talk about with this example is xanthan gum. So it's X-A-N-T-H-A-N, xanthan gum. And people are like, oh, it starts with an X. Like, how are you supposed to say that? It must be really bad for me. And we actually use it quite a bit in my industry because it helps bind things, it helps emulsify. It actually is extracted from a plant, from a tree and it's a soluble fiber. So it's used in really small amounts, so you won't really see it make a difference in your fiber intake. 
Um, but yeah, if you were to put enough xanthan gum in something, it'd be really gummy, but it would have a lot of fiber. <laughs> and like, it's just soluble fiber <laughs> and that's really important for your gut health. Um, so don't be afraid of ingredients. They're there for a reason. Even the ones that sound scary, there's so many regulations that food scientists jump through to make sure nothing is used in amounts that will be harmful to humans. And if you would take any, you know, carboxymethylcellulose, right? It's a really long word, but again, it's derived from a plant. It's nothing harmful. Um, and, and a lot of these, really, when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's naturally occurring in some of the fresh foods I eat. Yeah. All that food scientists do is take, you know, you take that big ingredient, you take these very functional ingredients from it, and then you add it into whatever other food you're preparing so that you can get the benefit of that specific ingredient in your sauce or you know binding your bar or whatever it may be mm -hmm. it's it's the food that you're eating in a different way you, you just whenever you buy a head of lettuce you don't see all of those sub ingredients in it yeah. Even though yeah. it's there. totally i think that's a good point too is i'll see this graphic a lot about a banana um so the first slide will be like a huge list of ingredients with like all these long like very chemical names and it's like would you eat this and everyone's like oh my gosh no and you swipe over it's like that's the makeup of a banana <laughs> <laughs> um so it just goes to show you like yes the food industry is required to put labels on things and a lot of times that's a technical label so it will say you know tetrasodium pyrophosphate and you're like oh, that sounds so scary you know but it really is like an extracted ingredient um that is just repurposed because you can't put you know, the whole other ingredient into the food, you just need to extract the functional bits, kind of like you were saying. I feel like we could talk about this for like hours on it. <laughs> really good, I know, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? The best way to find me is on Instagram. I'm at Good Vibes Better Food. I am working on a website, so soon you'll be able to visit goodvibesbetterfood.com. So again, my name's Anna Gustafson. I'm a registered anti-diet dietitian. And if you ever want to get in touch with me directly, you can email me, Anna, at goodvibesbetterfood.com. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I do take clients. Um, I've got kind of a limited scope because I do have a full-time job as well. Um, but I do currently have three spots available if you want to work with a dietitian on your relationship with food and exercise and intuitive eating. I think it, health is so individualized. I think it's important to see a specialist, especially when it comes to nutrition. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, yeah. Chef Petrus, for yeah. joining us, and we look forward to seeing you all again soon.